The performance of this graphics card will shock you as it did me. I had no idea that this was still a very powerful 1440p GPU. This here is Nvidia's RTX 2080 Super, which was a top of the line graphics card a few years ago, but now it's an affordable option that you can squeeze into five to $600 gaming PCs. We're gonna talk all about this card to include the current pricing, benchmarks, and other cards that you should consider as well, all after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, and you probably already I already know that I've been using them for so long to activate Windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18 and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have Windows keys but also a ton of other stuff such as Office and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple and only takes like 3 minutes total so activate Windows today and remove that nasty watermark and don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. All right, so the RTX 2080 Super launched back in July of 2019 at an MSRP of 699. Believe it or not, just a few short years ago, 699 was actually a very expensive graphics card. Oh, my sweet summer child. But in today's world, that's like a mid-range card at best, but I digress. Now, people weren't super happy with the 2080 Super when it first launched because gamers weren't happy with the revolution of ray tracing graphics cards just in general, but it was also a tough sale compared to the previous gen GTX 1080 Ti. The 2080 Super launched with just a 9% on average boost over the 1080 Ti, and since the 1080 Ti launched with the exact same 699 MSRP, people were a little upset. It's absolutely bonkers to think that just a few years ago, we were actually upset that we were only getting a 9% boost without increasing the prices, because in 2023, we're getting cards that cost hundreds of dollars more without getting any extra performance. It's all in hindsight, but they sure are accurate when they say that you don't realize you're living in the good times until you're out of them. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. We had no idea that things would get so much worse like they are now. Regardless though, the launch of the 2080 Super was super special to me, and this is the reason why I will never be able to sell this graphics card. Back during that July of 2019, Nvidia actually invited me and nine of my fellow PC building YouTubers out to their HQ in California, and it was the first time that most of us have ever met face to face. I've collabed over the years with the Toasty Bros, OzTalks Hardware, Tech by Matt, Nerd on a Budget, and some of the other guys, but we just never met in person up until this point. Nvidia flew us out, put us up in a hotel, gave us a full day's tour of their HQ buildings, and we basically spent 48 hours all together, and this was a huge deal for me at the time. I had just 60,000 subscribers at that time, and ZTT was by far the smallest YouTube channel out of anybody else that attended that event, so it's pretty crazy just to think how far we've come since this card launched. But yeah, at the end of our long tour, they took us to the end video store where the employees can buy some stuff and they basically told us that we could grab a few things and basically take whatever we wanted. I got a couple of shirts and I even got a baby onesie for Antonio who's now four years old by the way but as we were leaving the store they shocked us all with a 2080 Super. We were all very excited that they were just letting us grab whatever Nvidia merchandise that we wanted like the shirts and the mugs and the hats and whatnot but then when they came in with a bunch of 2080 Supers to give to us it was absolutely crazy. We've all been sent GPUs like this before but they're always a attached to a sponsored video or a required integration. This was legit just a free graphics card that literally launched the day that we were there. So it was a great feeling, especially while being such a small YouTuber at the time. Towards the end of the trip, the CEO Jensen even came to hang out with us while we were eating lunch. I got this legendary photo with him. And of course he was wearing that leather jacket that he wears for every single press announcement. So yeah, that's my story of why the 2080 Super is so important to me. But let's talk about why it's super important for all gamers and possibly even flippers. As of right now, this card is just sitting at four and a half years old, which is usually the sweet spot for price to performance used graphics cards. And at the time of filming, the average used price right now is about at $220. At this price point, it's sitting right in between a brand new RX 6600 and RX 6600 XT. But per usual, it absolutely smokes those cards in terms of FPS per dollar. A used RTX 3060 is also at the same price range. And I am starting to like that card more for used builds, but the 2080 Super does outperform even that one by a little bit. The 200 $120 average is great to see on paper, but just how difficult or how easy is it to actually find it at that price? After scrolling on eBay a couple of times throughout the week, I did see several models available at this average price point, but the lower price ones seem to mostly be the blower style of coolers, which most people don't want, and the normal two fan designs are usually a bit more expensive. I did also see a couple on Jawa.gg for $220 and $240, but yeah, they're out there for sure, but you might need to exercise some patience to find a good model at 
at the $220 average. Next up, let's talk about VRAM for a second because whenever you're discussing used budget graphics cards, VRAM is always gonna be a hot topic. 2023 was an explosive year for VRAM requirement and more and more games are starting to chew up and spit out cards that only have four or six gigabytes. So a lot of people these days are only considering GPUs that have at least eight. Comment down below how much VRAM you have, by the way. Thankfully, the RTX 2080 Super does have eight gigabytes of GDDR6, so I think we are good to go for now. But a couple of years from now, if you do invest in a 2080 Super, you may be wishing for more VRAM, but for now, I think it's fine. As far as power requirements go, Nvidia recommends a 650 watt power supply or more, and you can honestly probably get away with a little less, but ideally, I'd pair this car with a 650 or even a 750, just so your PSU is operating more efficiently and so you have more headroom for your next upgrade. Now, for the car that we're testing today, this is indeed the Founders Edition model, and this came straight out of the Nvidia HQ, like I said. And here's the quick specs if you were interested in the numbers, but I think most of us care about the benchmarking numbers more than that. Here's the test bench that we'll be running today, and shout out to Deepcool for the hookup on their new CH560 digital black case, which is honestly perfect for any sort of testing like this. This digital screen here reads out the temperatures, which is amazing for testing, and we also have a huge front panel, which is great for airflow to keep whatever we're testing nice and cool. And I do think that this kind of unique design with the bigger PSU basement is pretty neat. I'll have the link to this case and everything else that we're testing with today down in the description. But for our benchmarking, here's the specs that you need to know about. For the CPU, we're going with a standard Ryzen 5 5600, and I think that's about normal with what I consider pairing with the RTX 2080 Super. We also have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 clocked at 3600 megahertz. So let's finally jump in here, and we'll start with the literal brand new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and using 1080p Ultra, we got a very solid 96 FPS average. If you're a competitive gamer, then you can obviously tune these down a bit to utilize a 144 or 165 hertz monitor, but what's even more impressive are these 1440p numbers. With 1440p and balanced, we still got 83 FPS, and again, those can be tuned a bit if you wish. Next up, we tested Cyberpunk 2077 and all of its 2.0 updates, and in 1080p, again, with ultra settings, we got 83 FPS. When you bump that up to 1440p and high, we still got over that 60 FPS target mark, and that certainly confirms that the 2080 Super is indeed a very capable 1440p card still. After that, we tested Assassin's Creed Mirage because this series continues to give us a nice built-in benchmarking tool, and with 1080p and very high settings, we got 91 FPS, and when we switch up to 1440p and high settings, we got 78. Forza Horizon 5 was up next. Again, we're keeping this as our Forza benchmark because the new Motorsports benchmark just isn't a great tool, and in 1080p with ultra settings, we got 111 FPS, and with 1440p and ultra, we got 96. Absolutely love seeing 1440p ultra being used for most of these titles. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that with Starfield, though. This one is just way too demanding to run, and with 1080p, we actually had to put the settings at low, but with FSR turned on, and here we got 59 FPS. For 1440p, we got the same amount of FPS using 1440p and low, but we had to drop the resolution scale down to 75%. Don't ever judge a graphics card based off the Starfield performance, because this game is just so incredibly difficult to run, unless if you're buying a graphics card specifically for Starfield, and if that's the case, then you're gonna need to get ready to spend a lot of money. But yeah, here's the rest of the 1080p benchmarks that we ran for you all, and as you can see, most of these titles are set to either high, ultra, or max settings, and the 2080 Super didn't struggle with any of these at all. For our 1440p benchmarks, most of these are towards high, but a lot of them are at ultra as well. And again, this is just a really solid 1440p graphics card, and it provides a crazy amount of price to performance. I personally did not expect these good of numbers in 1440p for a $220 GPU. So after seeing all of those impressive numbers, the most important question now becomes, who should actually buy this graphics card? In my opinion, the 2080 Super is one of the best possible options for somebody that's specifically looking for an affordable Nvidia GPU, and they happen to be comfortable with buying a used one as well. Remember, Nvidia does have an 87% market share, so that is actually what most gamers are interested in right now, but if you do want a $200 to $250 brand new Nvidia graphics card, your only option is the RTX 3050, and you definitely should not buy that one. Nope. I found this video here from FPS Test where they compared a 2080 Super with a 3050, and in some games, the 2080 Super literally doubles the amount of FPS. These cards are the same price right now, at least used versus new pricing. So if you do think that the 2080 Super is a good option for you, what other parts should you build with alongside of it? I think the 2080 Super is perfect for a $500 to $600 mix of new and used parts build, and you could certainly start with the Ryzen 5 5600 and a cheap AM4 motherboard like I did for our testing rig. I also like the Intel i5 12400F at just a few bucks more. It's a bit faster and has a decent upgrade path for a 12th or 13th Gen i7. But yeah, hopefully this video at least helped you get a little bit closer to determining what GPU you should build with next. And please let me know down in the comment section what other GPU you want to see us quickly review. And also feel free to check out the GTX 10 series video that's on the screen now.